Maybe. Okay. So let's go through the guide. This guide, and it's mainly for 2v2, I don't really play 3s, because this is shit in 3s. I feel like you could make it work in solo shuffle though. Um, especially after the next patch, where you're getting a lot of quality of life upgrades. Uh, like you're getting a bunch of quality of life stuff, and 2 paint expressions and stuff. So I feel like it might be actually okay in solo shuffle, because you're going to be able to do a lot more damage, because you're getting 2 more, or like you're getting 2 mind blast charges. So yeah, I mean, I can touch on that towards the end, but it's not really, like this is mainly for 2v2, like if you want to play Priest, honestly 2v2, or like a healing Priest, 2v2 is the only bracket you're actually like, good at. If you want to play another bracket, just play a good healer, like Rest of Druid, or Dragon. Well, that's my, my take on it anyways. But yeah, we can start with the Talents. Um, Let's start with the class tree. So, like, this is just kind of the base, and you're lacking a lot of utility. I'm playing without purge, without MC, and without master spell. Um, yeah. So we can touch on this first. You have you have two new spells here that you got in in Dragonflight, and you you never press any of them pretty much. Like you press renew once in a blue moon. Um, and it's basically just a filler whenever you're on the move and you're not able to cast anything. If you're able to stand still and cast, you never press this. Fair of Mending, worthless spell, even with a talent. That buffs it by 50%, it's still worthless. So, you never take this, and you never press it either. Even if you took it, you wouldn't press it, so... It's kind of a worthless talent. And then... We're taking a lot of Shadow or Death talents here. Because this build is all focused around expiation and getting value out of your expiation, yeah. So you're playing expiation, eternal rest, less damage from death, the ability to double death, and then obviously death. And then you're just basically picking all the good stuff down here. Like, even these two talents aren't that valuable because you don't actually flash of light that much, but it's nice to have when you actually need to, I suppose. And then psychic, psychic voice is just mandatory, big pick. Feathers from ability, good pick. This is huge. This new talent, it's so nice compared to before. Like, in, the, in previous seasons as a Disc Priest, I basically play Masochism every single game, and I wouldn't have either Feathers or Body and Soul. And now I have both Feathers and well, Body of Soul. Body and Soul. So it's super nice. Like, big mobility. Then Grip I usually take, because it's really good against assassin Assassination Rogues. It's pretty much good against every rest of druid if your teammate is on the rest of druid and he gets bash cloned so you can like grip the bash and prevent the clone i mean i could experience more with running master spell into druids to master spell clones as well but it's like super expensive and you you don't really have infinite mana but if you're trying to go for like an all-in strat then improved md might be really good mc i used to mc a lot before whenever i played twos like with a feral or a rogue you know, you'd like kidney them into an MC against all the rest of druids and stuff that couldn't like purge it. But I feel like now, like, like if you're against an assassination rogue, you never want to MC him because you're just gonna rot, rot down and fall further behind. Same with the feral. I mean, there are arguments to be made to play it against like DHs, just to stall out the game to further dampening so you can keep mana for dampening. But I kind of like to just. Like, after the stun, I kind of, like, just do damage during the stun and get max range. Like, try to run away from them while doing damage. And you're stalling the way, like, the game out that way, because you have to run all the way over to you, and when they get over to you, you can, like, you can fare them even. You know, because you, you, you max range and drag them away from the enemy healer, and then... And then when they, when, once they connect, you just fare them full instead. The issue is, if you're playing with a rogue or a feral, they're gonna have bleeds, so the first probably gonna break, but... You know... I mean, it's going to give you some distance at least, like they're going to be fair for a global at least. And then PI, obviously, pretty huge. These talents are completely worthless, never take these. Moved Grace, I mean, if you're playing against like a Windwalker, um, you can play this. For sure, because then it, it, it'll line up with their pop. But most Windwalkers now are playing Serenity anyways. 
So having Leap of Faith on a one minute cooldown isn't bad. Because it lines up with their with their Serenity pop anyways. <coughs> um, these talents, you can't really reach them as the issue. Like, these talents are actually good, but you'll need to commit two points for them. I don't really feel like you have two points to spare. Um, this thing, more smite damage. Like, there is a smite build that I tried earlier on, but it's kind of shit compared to this. Where you actually took this, but it's not really worth it in my opinion. Because I, I rarely ever press smite. That's why I don't pick harsh discipline either. Because you barely ever smite. Like, smite is a waste of gold, but you all, pretty much always have something better to press. So, yeah, don't smite. Inspiration, you have solo crit anyways. Like, super low crit, and you rarely flash heal or heal with your penance, so... I don't feel like it's a good talent. It might become a lot better once you actually... Once you actually start playing more crit, yeah? Master Spell, um... There's so few pallies or mages that... I rarely ever play it. As I said, it might be good to play against Druid sometimes if you're going for an all-in strat, but the issue is just you oom, yeah? And versus Rest of Druid, you kind of need to bring the game to deep dampening to win because he heals so much, so... I feel like pressing MD is just cucking yourself on mana. And then you take all of these, I don't know, Body and Soul. Nice for mobility, you're spamming shield on cooldown. You're getting a lot of uptime on this and a lot of value from it. Double PI, no-brainer for one point, such a huge value. Void Shield, just to reach down here to throw some pain, and it's also... Like surprisingly decent. Like if you shield your if you shield yourself and then you mind blast into a solace death and, and the mind blast solace hits before the shield breaks, you're actually refilling your shield a lot with this talent. Like this is a really underrated talent in my opinion, and it's really strong for 2v2 especially. Um throws of pain in mind games. Mind games isn't really that great, in my opinion. Like it's good for sure. But, like, a lot of the time, like, your highest priority is always Mind Blast and Death. And whenever you have time to cast, I feel like most of the time when you have time to cast, your Mind Blast Death or even Schism is already up, so it's, like, it's kind of hard to fit in, actually. Like, I don't use this on cooldown at all. And it's mainly useful for, like, using on Wrestle Druids, especially while they're stunned. But... Like, as I'll explain later in the guide, whenever you're playing against Rest Druid, you're not actually, for the majority of the game, you're not actually stunning Rest Druid. Because you're trying to kind of damp the game out, so... Having this is nice for, for like, securing the kill, or even if... Even if you're, like, if you're dragging the DPS far away while, you're, while your DPS is on the healer, it's super nice to have mind games to cast on the DPS, because then it's, like, actually a big heal. Because all the damage they're going to deal to you is going to heal you for a bunch. Translucent image, really nice. Um, I don't know what more to say about that. And I feel like all of these talents are like, don't really need that much explanation. But I've gotten a lot of questions about Divine Star, yeah? And Divine Star is actually a super nice ability. And it's mainly used to proc your Twilight Equilibrium without casting. So... The idea is kind of you, you dot things up, and then you Mind Blast, and either use your Solace or Divine Star into your death. And then, once your Mind Blast comes up cooldown, you obviously don't have Divine Star, so then you can Solace next. And you can always proc like the double, the double Twilight Equilibrium on your Mind Blast and death with these spells. In addition to that, like if the Divine Star hits two times, it actually does like 20k damage. So that means, I don't know, I don't even know how much Atonement heals right now, but say it's 50%. So then you're going to get 10k healing from from the Atonement from it. And in, in addition, you're going to get like, how much does it even heal? I think you get like, with dampening and stuff, you probably get like 10k healing from it as well. So you get 10k healing from the ability itself, 5k from Atonement, and then 20k to the enemy team. So it's like a, basically a, a 40k value spell, like in... In terms of total health moved in one global. It costs 5k mana though, so if you're if you're playing against Resto Druids and stuff, it's like unless you're under a lot of pressure, try to not use this so much and use Solace whenever you can. 
But when whenever you're against like assassination rogues, where you have a lot of pressure on you and the game's gonna be fast, if you have the choice between Solace and Divine Star, you always Divine Star. <laughs> because you don't really care that much about the mana, yeah? So you always Divine Star then, because it's... Like Solace does, I don't know how much it does in PvP, like 12k damage maybe. And then that means it restores like 6k health, so 18k health move total. But then, if you look at Divine Star, it's 40k health move total. And that's like, if you hit multiple people with it, it's even more, you know? So, if you don't really care about your mana, Divine Star is the spell to press. Um, And then, what else? Yeah, I, I usually put Binding Heals here, actually. A lot of people were curious about that, too. Angel's Mercy is really nice if you're getting trained all game, you know? But I feel like Binding Heals is a lot more flexible. The basic gist of it is that it saves you a global for putting atonement on yourself. Because a lot of people cleave right now, you know? And you don't have Radiance to put up multiple atonements. So you kind of use this Binding Heals to put up atonement on both yourself and your partner. Um. Yeah, so when it... When, like, with Binding Heals, whenever you Flash Heal something else, like if I Flash Heal this dummy, I'm going to get Atonement with myself as well from the Binding Heals. So you basically save a global. Because what happens a lot is, like, you're getting poked down a bit, and then they swap to your teammate. So then you're in a kind of awkward situation, because you want to shield your teammate, and then you have no Atonement on yourself. So if you want to put Atonement on yourself, you'll have to Renew. But Renew is a duck shit spell, as I said earlier, and you never want to press it. So what you do instead is you power shield them, and then you toss them a flash wheel, and then you both get atonement. Um, yep. I feel like that's kind of it for this. If you need more utility, I think the first spell I would drop is actually mind games. So you drop like mind games and this, and maybe you can put this and this, and get some more utility that way. And then you can like obviously put all of this stuff back. And if it's against a Resto Druid, you can maybe even drop Divine Star, because you're trying to tempt the game and Divine Star costs mana, so you kind of want to be solacing more for for efficiency. Um hmm. Okay, so let's go to the class screen. I mean I feel like this is a pretty basic spec up here. Um I usually take Protector of the Frail instead of Pain Transformation. Probably should be taking Pain Transformation more against, like, Assassination Rogues and stuff, just for the small heal. Because the game usually doesn't last until 2nd PS anyways. But I just have this default. But against, like, Assassination Rogues and maybe Feral Druids, you can pick this. But against, like, any Resto Druid team, I would probably take this, because you're going to get, like, several PSs per game. Um, Like, your Penance is pretty worthless in this patch, so... You basically just take this to get the schism. I mean, that's about it. This talent is completely worthless. It basically says your penance does 20% more damage once every minute, because it's a one perk per minute thing. So, if you wanted to spend one talent point for one of your penances every minute to deal 20% more damage, then be my guess, but it's completely trash. Um, This talent is completely trash, trash as well, but since you're not taking Radiance, you actually need to pick this to get the Solace. So that's why you pick this. I mean, you don't really feel this ability at all. I mean, it's kind of nice. Like, after you do the flash shield to put the atonement on yourself, like I mentioned, like the atonement is going to stay longer on you from penancing enemies, yeah? But that's about it. Um, This is actually, like, I don't think it's worth it now at all, but it's going to get buffed on the PTR, so it might be nice then. But yeah, um, in the state that it is that it's in right now, it's yeah not that good. I never really play big barrier, but I mean I still think it's worth taking this point three minute cooldown. Lines like you can use it on the first death mark of the game. You can use it on like the first incarn of the game, first metamorphosis of the game, etc. etc. And it's like it's still a twenty five percent damage reduction for ten seconds, so it's nice. But don't get baited by this barrier. Like, if you put this barrier do down and you have the opportunity to, like, get away or something, then um, you should definitely get away instead. Same for your teammate. Like, if they can kite, then kite. It's mainly just nice for, like, whenever you can't get away. Yeah? 
Um, you take standard stuff here. Contrition, not good at all, doesn't heal for shit, and you rarely use your penance for healing anyways. Um, Shadow Covenant costs way too much mana, but you might be able to do some meme stuff with it on low rating. One-shot some people. I think that's about it. Borrow time, super nice. You're spamming shield on cooldown, so you have like probably over 50% tap time on this haste buff. So it's nice. Cascation, like just good value overall for one point. Soul and Psyche, I mean this is kind of worthless I guess, so you could like decide to put these two points up here if you want to, but... Basically just trying to, you know, buff whatever you can. So say your mind blast does like 300k damage over a game. And it's 50% atonement healing, that's 150k healing, so 40% more of that, so... I don't know, basically you do like 60k more healing from this talent over the course of a game. So it's not too bad, but it's getting buffed on the PTR next patch to be 20% more atonement healing from all shadow damage. So then I would definitely recommend to to pick up this. Um, down here, Lenience, way better than Avenged. Three, like this is... Like just one of those hidden strong talents that just does stuff passively. And expiation again, this is what your entire build is revolved around. Mind Blast and Death is your like top priority spells. And this gives you a lot of damage. And in addition to damage, you get a lot of atonement healing because of that. So you heal more efficiently. Ballad Equilibrium is the same thing. Like... You're buffing your mind blast damage, your shadow or death damage, basically every damage spell you do, you buff because you're trying to like weave your spells so that you always have this up. And it basically just ends up giving you a lot of like extra damage and extra atonement healing. I feel like it's like these two talents, Train of Thought and Divine Ages, are completely trash and <laughs> I'd rather not pick them, but like Ages of Wrath there is just so much value. I don't know if maybe I have some. Some detail slugs here from a long game. I don't know, we can look at this maybe. Like my atonement and and power shield usually heals about the same, yeah. So the only spells you actually have that does anything are powered shield and powered life. And outside that you just want to try to do as much damage as possible to get atonement healing. And then every once in a while you flash heal. Like this was a three minute game and I used six flash heals. And that was mainly to put the atonement on myself. And then I did some penances because I was playing with Tony and he was chasing behind pillars. So I had to like try to chase around and heal with penance while, <laughs> while uh, he was sucking them. And then there's the question like Blaze of Light or Harsh Discipline. Like Blaze of Light isn't even that good because you barely ever penance. But it's really nice for the slow and the speed boosts on yourself as well. Because like if you look at my damage this game, like Penance was only 10% of my damage, so 15% more of that. Okay, so I guess it did like 30, 30k more damage, 33k more damage because of this talent. 33k damage, it's not nothing, yeah? Because it's also 50k healing then from Atonement, so it's like decent. But in addition, it, it like maybe helped me kite or maybe helped me yeah do stuff like that. Because Harsh Discipline, it goes to four smites, yeah, and in this game it was, how long was it again? Three minutes? And I used two smites. So I basically wouldn't have proc Harsh Discipline the entire game. I could see the argument for maybe, like, taking one point here and putting it into Mindbender. But the thing about Mindbender is, it's, like, damage every one minute, but whenever you do pop it, it, it does less damage each, each use compared to Shadow Fiend. So I kind of like having like a big shot like a bigger bigger shadow fiend, I guess. I mean I could see the argument for both sides. If you have a uh, mindbender, it lines up better with your PI as well. Because then you're gonna have PI for every other one instead of usually when you play Shadow Fiend, you're gonna PI before you get your second Shadow Fiend back up anyways. And yeah, maybe you could even do like this if you want to meme on people with uh, Light's Wrath. I don't even think it's bad. Like when you have your PI up. Like if you PI and then you you mind blast blast lights wrath into a death, that's gonna be some huge burst. Especially when once you get some more crit, I think this can actually crit for like 60k, 70k. 
But it's a really slow cast, though, so unless you have, like, PI up or... You know, your rogue is kidneyed the DPS so we can't kick you or anything, then... It's gonna be rough. But I do think it's, like... You can play this. You don't need to play Blaze of Light. But I just... Like, Blaze of Light is just more the... Fire and Forget version, you know? Like, you don't really need to think about it. And it works out nice. <clears throat> okay, so for PvP talents... I basically always play these talents. Eternal Rest, Catharsis, and Inner Light and Shadow. And Inner Light and Shadow, you always go Inner Shadow. Always go for the damage and uh, Atonement Healing. Um, yeah, so, because the reason is, I think, like, just from the extra Atonement Healing you get from it, it saves you more mana than the mana from Inner Light would save you. I don't know, like... I mean, there's an art, like, you probably save a bit more mana with Inner Light, but then you also get 10% more damage from this, so... so you do more pressure, yeah? And then Catharsis. Catharsis is super nice, because it was bugged before, so it didn't give you Atonement Healing, but now it also gives you Atonement Healing, so... It, it's basically just a lot of damage and Atonement Healing. And you're using, like, because you're using Expiation, you don't even need to think about the Catharsis. Because a lot of the time, like before, I felt like I would overcap my catharsis. Didn't really pay attention to my recoil for some reason, because I was kind of blind. But with this build, you're kind of spamming your uh, Purged Wicked a lot, because you're consuming it with Expiation, so... Your catharsis is kind of always getting value, and you're a disc priest, so people are kind of always going to hit you, I feel like. Pretty much always. Then, Eternal Rest, this is kind of what the entire build hinges upon. Um... Your goal is kind of to use Mind Blast and Death on Cooldown, yeah? So Eternal Rest helps with that a lot, because Death blocks your Expiation, and your Expiation does like 20k damage, and then Death does like 15k, so it's like instant 35k damage for 1.2k mana, that also procs Atonement Healing. So it's like super good in that regard, like Shadow Death is so efficient. It's 1k mana. Procs your Expiation, it's a ton of Atonement Healing, and also does good damage, yeah? So yeah, um, what's the next point in the guide? PP okay, gear stats. I think at the moment you just want to go for full haste versa. You want to get your versa to 30% and your haste to 30%. And then you want crit as your third stat. I don't have any crit because I just don't. Um, I'm going to get some when I get my tier pieces. That mastery, uh, you're just going to get some mastery from your belt and then also your uh, your tier pieces you're going to get some mastery on. So you're going to get some mastery, but you don't really want any. You mainly want haste versa up to 30% and then put the rest in crit. Probably not going to reach that this season, but yeah. Um, in general... When it comes to gearing, I didn't pick my weapon. I'm gonna get my weapon next week for for uh, trophies. Um, I just kind of bought all these with trophies first, and then I bought a bunch of small pieces. Got this in my first vault, and then in my second vault, I picked a socket for it because all my options were trash. Yeah. Um. Okay. You want to offer some promotion? That's unfortunate because I'm not interested, Mister Bot. Um, enchants, I'm just going for the Versa Haste gems and then the primary set gem. I'm trying out Leech for a bit, I haven't really decided yet if I think it's good. I didn't really actually get any, I just swapped this earlier today, but I'm not sure if you can get any value from it. Um, because I think Leech is, Leech on healing isn't effective in PvP, I think. So I'm probably just going to go back to speed here. And then obviously the... In plus mana enchant, in plus mana enchant, then some speed on your boots, verse on my rings. Yeah. I usually play Alacrity just for the haste and just to kind of forget about it. Um, in some comps, if you're not getting hit, there is a, an argument to be made to play Dark Archangel here. And if you were playing Dark Archangel, I would actually kind of think that badge would be nice. So you would like badge and Dark Arc every minute. Lights up nicely. 
So I'm probably going to get a badge for later, and then in the games where I do play a Dark Archangel, then uh, I'll play badge. But this is mainly, if you've played the same team multiple times in a row and you know they're never hitting you, then you can pick Dark Arc, yeah? Um, anything else about gear? I don't really think so. It's pretty straightforward with this expansion. If you want to craft this and this, obviously. If you don't know how to, read a guide. Um, oh yeah, we can talk about like, once we do get set pieces, I feel like because the Lariat and stuff is nerfed by 50% in PvP, I think we're actually going to play these leggings the entire season, so then your set pieces will basically be the rest. It's kind of unfortunate because the tier legs actually has crit verse and the gloves have, have like crit mastery. So ideally you wouldn't want to play tier gloves. But I feel like maybe the haste proc will make up for it. So I haven't really completely decided about that yet, but I'm probably going to get both. Yeah. So like eventually I'll get like tier leggings and a normal pair of gloves and then make a lariat or something. But that's uh, for later. Hmm. Races. Races next. I've gotten a lot of questions why I'm, I'm a gnome. And the worst part is I actually think gnome is the best 2v2 race for for Disc Priest right now. Um, firstly, gnome gives you your best stat, which is percent or haste right here. So you get 1% haste. I don't know if you can see it. Yeah, you can see it. So you get 1% haste for free. In addition, you get 5% more mana, which is kind of big. You see, I have um, 186k mana now, and I only have the tier 2 enchant of this. So if you if you have rank 3 of this and this, I think you have 275k mana. So I'm getting like 12 to 13k mana extra, which doesn't sound that much, but the main thing is that it actually buffs your Solace mana regen and your Shadow Fiend mana regen. Because you're getting like like one percent of your maximum mana and like percentage of your maximum mana from these. So you're getting five percent extra mana, but you're also getting five percent mana back extra from your souls and your shadow fiend. And I I actually can't even count on two hands how many times I've won the game with literally zero mana left. Like I'm completely drained on mana. So having this extra little mana actually valuable. I mean, it's not the best thing, like, it's not going to make or break your game, but it actually makes a difference, yeah? And then the main part, why I really like it, is Escape Artist. Like, now that you have both, both Phantasm to clear snares and Escape Artist, you can actually kite melee super hard around the pillar. Like, if an Assassination Rogue is on you, like, you're on the pillar, you have deadly poison, you're hating your life. You pop a feather, and then you like fade at the same time, and then you zoom around the pillar and you escape. Especially if your teammate has put a slow on the rogue. And he's really sad. Especially if like his kidney shot is coming off cooldown, he wants to kidney you really badly. And then you, you can like shield yourself as well and escape artist, zoom, and you're gone. And you're delaying his kidney. Maybe you can even force him to kidney your teammate. That's really good for you, because you're a disc priest, you don't really want to be kidneyed. So it's it's super underrated, this, especially against rogues, against demon hunters as well, because they have like uh, they can like spam like things that can spam slow you, you know, like rogues kind of slow you automatically, yeah, with the crippling poison. But if you're against like a DH or even a windwalker or or warriors that need to like press their stuff to slow you, it's super nice. It's also super nice if you. If you want to go for a fair, to have like an extra slow break. And this also breaks roots, so it's more OP in that regard, but it's one minute cooldown instead of 30. Um, I mean, what I usually do a lot as well is like you can fair them. Like your kidney is coming up, you're on the pillar, you fair them and press fade. And then, like, even if they get dispelled, you got away. So. Now you're gone, now you can like put a shield up, penance yourself maybe. Use a flash shield, I don't know. 
And you can do the same thing with the root. So you can like root them, escape artist, run around the pillar, and then you're gone. Hmm. Yeah, um, other races. I mean, Night Elf, Night Elf is obviously good if you're human. Dwarf is good. I would go Dwarf over Dark Iron Dwarf, because... Um, the Intellect bonus from Dark Iron is nerfed in PvP, so it doesn't actually give you all that Intellect that it says. It just gives you like 300, which is kind of shitty. Well, Dwarf gives you like 10% damage reduction, while and like you usually want to press your Dwarf while you're getting bursted by a Rogue or Feral, so getting 10% extra damage reduction on top of that is kind of nice, yeah? So if you were if you're struggling a lot against uh, rogues and ferals, maybe go dwarf, but it's kind of bait as well, you know. Because, like, say you get kidney death marked, you're kind of always forced to drink it early or PS it early, and if you PS it early, you're kind of fine. You are kind of fine, but like even like if you PS it early and then set the kidney and then. Dwarf it off after. I mean, I guess that's fine. But the issue is you can never drink it on... On Deathmark. If... If you're playing Dwarf, because then the Dwarf is useless, yeah? So then you're gonna drink it. And then your Dwarf goes, goes on cooldown, yeah? Hey, Karapuzuk. What's up, man? Your Dwarf goes on cooldown, so... Yeah. Shadow Meld is just nice for getting drinks, I guess. Maybe melt some CC. Blah blah blah. But I feel like it's... You get value from it more rarely than Gnome. Like, the thing about Gnome is you get value every single game. I feel like I get value from Escape Artist. Every single Rest of Druid game, I feel like I'm getting value from the mana. And then the Haste is also... You always get value from the Haste. So... I just feel like it's... It's not necessarily the best thing in all situations. But if you're playing ladder, it's a numbers game, yeah? Like, this is just giving you more value overall. Like, most of the time. That's just my opinion, though. Um, yep, okay, that's races. Rotation and priority. So, basically, what you want to do is... You want to dot this thing. And then you want, you want to press your shield on cooldown. And then Mind Blast Solace, death. Then you put up a new dot, then you shield yourself, and then you can, for example, schism into penance. Now it's back up again, and now you can do it with this instead. And now you shield yourself, put up a dot, and like now I'm smiting, but it's like it's because it's it's obviously not a real game. So <laughs> now you can maybe do this. Now I fucked up a bit my rotation, but whatever. Like you're basically just trying to rotate. Your mind blast and and death on cooldown. Like everything else, don't think about it. Everything else, just press whatever is up. If you have mind blast ready, if you have schism, mind blast, penance, everything ready, mind blast into a solace death. Then you put your dot up again, and now we can kind of do whatever. Like obviously now you have the shadow thing, so maybe you want to schism into a penance, into a mind blast, into like this. Yo, Josie, what's up, man? But the main thing is just always mind blast into one of these into a death. And then usually you put your dot back up and then you can either schism or mind games into a penance and then you rotate. So hmm, how can I put it? Like you mind blast into solace, into death, and then like because now we we have perfect uptime, yeah, and that's never gonna happen in a real game. So usually what you do after that, you put put up your dot again, and then you can schism into a penance, and then you do mind blast again. Boom, boom, boom. Put your dot up again. Now you have shadow. So now you, you mind games. And now you can put a shield up. And now mind blast again, like this, and put your dot up again. And now you can just penance, whatever, put a shield up back up or something. Mind blast, solace, that dot, put up a new shield. Schism into a penance, and then you cancel it early because it's worthless. And then you just keep going. And now you have like a global or two. Maybe you can run away a bit. La la la. Mumbai's solace death. 
put up a new of this, put up this. Now you have a free global, so now you can penance. So this is why you play the line star, because then you always have this, like either this or this between your between your uh, your mind blast deaths, yeah. And obviously, if they're super low, if you know that your mind blast is gonna put them under 20%. Then you death instantly, yeah. So say, say he's like twenty five percent, and you you're mind blasting. Then just mind blast death instantly twice to get the kill. But if your mind blast isn't going to put them under twenty percent, then you always solace or divine star in between. And then weirdly enough, like your shadow or death, if if you're not in a position to like mind blast anyone, if you're running around the pillar and stuff. Your Mind Blast is actually your top priority spell. Because it costs so little mana and does so much damage. Look, look at this. This was a normal hit. 36, but this is because it's low, yeah? So the death does more damage. This seems kind of low, actually. How much is the Expiation doing? Yeah, maybe it's right. So usually I think it does like, death does like 15k, and this does like 15 to 20k or whatever. So it's like 30k instant damage for 1k mana. Super good. On an 8 second cooldown. You want the death on cooldown and mind blasting cooldown. That's like top priority. Top priority. And the nice thing about this as well is that like if you're trying to go for like a smite build or something, like a non-expiation build, the issue is that your mind blast and death or whatever doesn't give you atonement healing because it does no damage. And there's no reason for the enemy to ever kick you on shadow. So basically with this build, they're kind of forced to kick you on shadow. And then once they kick you, you can like self power shield yourself. Maybe you can penance yourself. So you don't actually have to worry about kicks at all. Like you never fake cast, never fake cast. Fake casting is a bait. Unless you're in a situation where you're 20% HP. Your shield is on cooldown, your power of life is on cooldown, your swap is on cooldown, your fair, everything, you cannot live, never fake cast. Um, yeah. I mean, I guess maybe if, if the enemy healer is in a stun, you have your DPS on you, you don't have your fair, and you know, no, actually, even then. If, if he was 30% HP, I would Penance first, just get kicked into a Mind Blast this. And if it doesn't, then you pray your Penance puts him below 20% so you can death. Don't fake. Fuck faking. If you're in a position where you need to fake, you're bad. Just play the game in a way where you never actually have to fake. Yeah? Just put yourself in a position where you never have to fake. That's the idea. Um, I feel like that kind of is enough about the rotation. I mean, I can do like a one minute, so we can we can we can see here how much damage I'm doing. No cooldowns or anything. So we do this. I'm not gonna shield myself or anything either. And we can see how the DPS is. Do, 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 do. I mean, the DPS is going to be a little bit inflated because I'm not double deathing any air. So at least it doesn't get scuffed by that. But my death is, is going to do a lot more damage, obviously. So, yeah. I mean, this is just basically the rotation, yeah? Just, just Mind Blast, Solace, into Death, into Put Up Your Dot Again, and then you use either of these, and then you repeat, yeah? It's not that complicated. Um, yeah, I feel like that's good enough for that. Um, defensive CD script. Um, honestly, I haven't really figured out the best script yet for most matchups. I mean, I guess like <laughs> Demon Hunters, you always paint suppression. Against Deathmark, you either paint suppression or Medallion. Like you mainly face rogues and you mainly face rogues and demon hunters. I feel like um, a lot of the time, 
you're actually fine with alcohols. Besides against assassination rogues. Whenever the assassination rogues goes all in on you in the start, you have to make it a fast game kind of. If they're playing with if they're playing with like a disc priest or something, you kinda of wanna make it a fast game, so you just wanna trade your cooldowns really fast. You know, like maybe the first uh Maybe the first kidney you PS, and then the next kidney, if they death mark your trinket into a dome, and then maybe the next, after the next kidney shot, you rapture. You know, just keep it going. Like, keep your CDs rolling all the time. But if it's like a, an assassination or aggressive druid, you actually don't need to spend cooldowns that aggressively. It's mainly if it's like a disc, disc assassination. Yeah. Um, Playstyle. It's kind of what I've been saying, but like you just want to stand still and cast your mind blast stuff as much as you possibly can while shielding on cooldown. And this is something that a lot of people don't seem to get about this priest. But you never want to push in. Like if if your enemy DPS is on the dummy here and the enemy team is around the pillar. Like, you don't want to run all the way in there. Like, you want... If, if you're playing with, like, a Feral Rogue, you want them to just AFK, wait for a restuff, and then go. You know, wait for their stun DR. Don't get baited to chase behind the pillar while your Priest is standing, like... Your Priest is standing far back. Why would you want to chase behind the pillar? If you chase behind the pillar, your Priest isn't going to be able to do the damage or heal you. So... You know... You gotta make sure you tell your partners, don't line of sight me. Don't line of sight me. If I can't do damage, I'm a worthless healer. I do no healing. The only saving grace I have is my damage. So you want to like maximize the opportunity for your disc priest to do damage. I always tell my people, do not chase. If you don't have stun DR ready, don't go. If you have stun DR ready, Okay, maybe you can go. But ideally you would like then because if I see you have stunned you already, I will come, you know? So then when you stun I can do damage. But just be patient. Like what's it gonna do? You're gonna press mutilate on them back there? For what? 10 damage? Yo, Bard Pit. Yeah, I'm probably gonna click this up and put it on YouTube. Thank you so much for the sub, man. Wait, four months in a row? Big sub. Thank you, thank you so much. Happy New Year, man. Really appreciate it. But yeah, especially in low ratings, you kind of have to coach your DPS a bit. I mean, even I'm doing like when I'm playing with like super good players, if they haven't played that much with disc before, I actually have to like tell them what to do, kind of. I mean, at least just give like I'm not telling them to do anything, but I'm like coming with suggestions. Like, at least I'm running behind the pillar. Like, okay, we're against Rested Rude Demon Hunter. Okay, let's try to damp this. So if you if you stun the Demon Hunter, bleed him up, and then run to the Rested Rude again, so we don't get cleaved, that's going to be super good. Because what happens a lot of the time is, if you're playing with a rogue, you know, a, a lot of people are probably playing with rogues right now, because Assassination Disc is really good comp. If they stun the DPS, put bleeds up, and run away. Run back to the Druid and annoy the Druid. With his bleeds up and your damage, you're actually going to kill the enemy DPS. So the enemy DPS will be forced to run all the way back. Because you're dra at the same time as this is happening, you're dragging them to Africa. You're running away, like 80 yards from the enemy healer, and you the DPS is following. He has the bleeds up, or you're mind blasting him into a solace death. Bang, he's 40% HP. Another mind blast death comes, he's dead. So then he's forced to run all the way across the map, or the druid is forced to come. And if the druid comes, then it's super easy for you, your, your DPS to do damage. Then he's not kiting the, then he's not kiting your DPS anymore, because he has to come heal. So now your rogue gets to get like full beats on the druid, do some damage on the druid, and then, like once that happens, you have another kidney, and you rinse repeat this. That's like, kind of the playstyle for most. Um, like, especially for, like, Disc Feral and Assassination Feral, because they have bleeds, yeah? So they put bleeds on the DPS, and then they go hit the healer, while you're dragging them to Africa. 
You're dragging them to Africa, max range from their healer, so if they chase them with the bleeds, you can actually kill them. They're forced to run back. That's like the big strat. That's the strat that gets you number uno. It's a big bitch strat. You stun them with bleeds, and then even before the stun is over, the rogue or feral runs back to the enemy healer, and in the stun even, you've already run 40 yards, <laughs> so they're stunned, and now if they want to come to you, they need first need to come 40 yards, and you're, you're still running, and then all of a sudden, they're on you, while the enemy healer is across the map, on the other side of the map, with a rogue slowing them, with crippling poison on them, and you keep running, and you blast them with damage, and all of a sudden they're like, oh shit, I'm dumb, I need to run back to my healer to get some heals. But he's 80 yards away. So then he's just running in the middle doing nothing. Not pressing any damage. And and you're just getting to blast them. All the while he's just running in the middle. Not hitting anything. Okay. Um, comps, yeah. I mentioned Disc Feral and Assass. I mean, these are the comps I've mainly been playing so far this season. I think Disc Feral and Assassination are... The best ones and then disc demon hunter is really good as well um but the, you actually play all of these comps kind of the same way what you want to do with all of them is you like most of the time like i make like i'm making a generalization here now like there are times where it's good to stun the healer but if if you never stun the healer you can still get 2.4k i promise you Without stunning the healer one single time. Well, with a feral, you can like bash the healer, you know, DR rake stun or whatever on the healer. And with like a sass, whenever you manage, you can like cheap shot. But you can get to 2 4 100% of the time if you make the script never kidney a single healer. And you can get 2.4k easily. Never stun the healer. Never, like with a DH, also you have two stuns, so it's kind of, eh, okay, maybe you can like use your AoE stun on the healer. And just use your like like the spike thing felt I don't know what it's even called the thirty second stun on the DPS. So like with all of these comps, the idea is you hit the DPS, you hit the DPS while your um, while your DPS is on the healer, and then they come in for the swap with the stun. So the the, the assass rope stack kidneys him. He doesn't have any bleeds on him beforehand. A lot of rogues are like this, they, they don't want to kidney anything unless they have bleeds on already. Tell them they're fucking stupid. You're not... You're not... Using this kidney to kill in this kidney. You're using this kidney to make the enemy team fall behind, so that the next kidney where you do exactly the same, they're falling even further behind, and eventually you kill them. That is the idea. So even if he has no bleeds on, step kidney into a garrot, into a rupture, into a shiv, maybe like maybe use one in venom and then run back to the enemy healer before the enemy can even touch you. Because like if the enemy is a rogue, but like you want to be gone so he can't talk to you, but like before he's out of the stun. Because if you're standing here spamming your mutilate, your mutilate that does zero damage, the enemy rogue is gonna be able to press garrote on you that does giga damage, and then he's gonna be able to press rupture on you that does giga damage while you're pressing mutilate. So, just run away before the kidney is over. And then he will either have to use his sprint to get to you to dot you, or his step. And if he uses your step, like, I don't know. It's just super good. Just, just do this. So the script is just kidney, lead, DPS, hit healer. Priest, solo, DPS with leads. Repeat. I don't know. I don't think I can explain it any easier. You know? It's basically this. Kidney and bleed the DPS. Hit the healer. And if... Yeah, this is also... Like, a lot of the time, once you do this enough to people, they start getting annoyed, and then they just start hitting the rogue. <laughs> so what you do then is... You put your... Like, once you got your bleeds up, you're just kiting. None of this mutilate spamming for 2 damage. Tell them this. Your mutilate does 2 damage. Run away instead. 
just run. Avoid damage and let your Disc Priest pump. Because this is the problem, when, when you're playing Disc Priest on low rating, if your teammate is taking too much damage, you're not going to be able to do that much damage. So what I like to say to people, okay, your Garrote and Rupture is 50% or 70% of your damage. If you can do 70% of your damage while taking zero damage, so like scenario one, you deal 70% of your damage, take zero damage. Two, you deal 100% of your damage, take 100% of enemy damage. Okay, which one is better? Obviously, it's better to deal 70% of your own damage and take zero damage. So just tell these Gumbo Rogues to kite instead of press mute. Same with Ferals. Put your blades up, run away. Um, and with, De with Demon Hunter, it's kind of different, yeah? Because Demon Hunters can like press blur. You know, like when you press your defensive cooldowns, you can like kind of do stuff. And Demon Hunter has some leech and stuff like this. So it's kind of different for Demon Hunters. Demon Hunters can kind of st stay in. Then they can like be annoying and try to glimpse stuff and, and stuff like this. Because the thing is, while you're not taking damage, you're, the Disc Priest is going to be able to do so much more damage. So, how do I make this clear? Um, so if you only deal 70% of your damage, and I can just go up here. So now the Priest will do 50% of your damage. So you deal on 20% damage. Now the priest will do 10% of your damage, so you deal 110% of your damage. Because if you're tanking, if your DPS is tanking the enemy the entire time, you're not going to be able to do that much damage. I mean, you're still going to be able to do good damage, I guess, but the game is going to fall out of control really easily. You'll have to rotate through cooldowns all the time. Like if you play like this, you barely need to use cooldowns because you're taking so little damage. And it's the most mana efficient way to play, and it's the most damp way to play. Like this is how you beat rest druids, yeah? You either have to do this, or you have to all in the druid and gamble that he dies in the first two minutes. Or you're dead. And that's not very like consistent or whatever. Especially now the rest druids are so tanky. So just play safe, play in a way where you can win every time, and do this, yeah. Okay, with Disc Demo... I don't think Disc Demo is that great of a comb, but it you can probably get like 2-4 with it. Um, I think I got to like 2-3 with it so far, but it's not that great, because you kind of lose the rest of the Druid teams. The issue is just, just that if the enemy team has a rest of Druid and a melee, the demo cannot force the enemy melee off of him from with pressure, even with all your damage. The enemy DPS can just stay in the entire time outside of the nether port. So, yeah. I wouldn't say play this con. If you know one of the best demo locks in the game, then maybe play it, but it's just way easier to play these three cons. Um, one thing about this demo is that you want to PI this nether portal is finishing. Like, one, when the pit lord is getting summoned, that's when you want to PI. Because then it does, like, infinite damage. Um, I feel like we've kind of gone through anything. Is there any questions? Any specific... Oh, yeah, I was going to talk about add-ons for a bit. I mean, my UI is kind of scuffed now, because I got some more spells, so I had to add like an extra bar up here. So I kind of wanted to of everything. Um, I don't know. Yeah. Okay, of course, what's up? This is the, the, the Mr. Demo lock, by the way. Mr. Demo lock, of course. What does the Demo lock wonder about? Oh, when? Oh, so you're asking when we're going to play twos. Okay. I mean, I'm sitting here on number one right now, of course. So I think 
uh, I'm going to need to make an alt to play with you. <laughs> no, I'm probably going to drop soon, but um, like, I'm not sure I wanted to play that much tonight because I'm go like probably going out in a bit, like just hang with the family for a bit, and then I'm capped. And then tomorrow I'm going home or like traveling back home to where I'm studying because then I'm home for for the holidays. So yeah, well, we're gonna look at my add-ons for a bit, I guess. Um, advanced interface options. I don't know. It's just a nice add-on to have. Like there's some spicy settings you can find maybe in Big Mixes Discord or. I don't know. I put I, I changed some settings in this and I never touched it again. Advanced raid frame settings so just to make your your healing frames a bit prettier. Makes your healing frames a bit prettier. Big debuffs, big nice. I need to add some more spells because after I updated it, like mind games went away. You know, adaptive swarm went away, so I need to add back some stuff in here. Like scare beast went away. So it's a really nice add-on to have, but you have to add some stuff. Bind pad. Okay, this this add-on is huge. So I don't have anything keybound here. Nothing is keybound here. Everything is just keybound in here. So like all of these macros and whatever. Yeah, this is this is basically a template for like our macros. I use that on a lot of spells. So like my smite key is the same key as my flash shield key. Yeah, yeah, Rhapsody, of course. So my, my smite key is the same heal as my flash shield key. My shield is the same as my pain. Add cursor for this. This is like for purge and dispel. Target player, blah, blah, blah. Target party too. I've never used this. <laughs> Unfortunate. Um, focus, la, la, la. I don't know if I have any other macros. They are like nice. I don't really think so. Um, what other add-ons? Bug sack. I don't know why I even installed this. It's just annoying. I don't know how to fix these bugs anyways. So <laughs> someone just recommended it because like everyone was having like hella problems, but why do I care? I'm not, I'm not going to fix these bugs anyways. Details, whatever. Diminish. Diminish is kind of nice just to see your own DRs. Um, so this is something I did. And people probably think like I'm a noob or whatever, but this is my own DR right there. And it's super big in the middle of my screen. So I can see when I'm on DR super easily. Like always. I don't even need to look at it because it's like big and I can see it in like the corner of my eye. So I can see when I'm coming off poly DR, when I'm coming off fair DR, when I'm coming off stun DR. And it's super nice to be able to do that, especially if you want to like feed all my kidney shot. If you want to like try to death a trap, because like I'm pretty sure now um, his trap actually comes off cooldown before the trap tier does, so you can like not get baited if he like jumps to you like one second before you can like hold your death. Um, you can know if you need to death a fair or a poly, because maybe like they're following you like like they start to fake poly or fake fair you like one or two seconds before the DR is actually over. So you can just let, like let it go through and get half belly or half air, you know. Um, other add-ons, favorites. I don't know. I think this is some friendless thing, but I don't think it works anymore. It's supposed to like show, like who's horde and who's alliance or something. I don't know. Um, fly plate buffs. I don't know if anyone who has used that. It's kind of buggy, but it's really nice. I don't think it has been updated for years. It's basically just my dot here, and I think mind games as well. So I can see this big because my dot always falls off now, you know, because I'm using expiation. So it's nice to have it. I have a big dot up there. Okay, what else? I think you, you can also add like. I added like scenario word from Recipe so I can like try to MC it off. I should probably add life to him also to try to MC it off. Like renewing mist from, from Mist Weavers I have to like be super annoying and like see renewing mist on the nameplate so I can like spam purge it away. 
Um, frame color is like for some colors up here. Gladius is Gladius, yeah. So looks like this. Um, arena one, two, three. And I have my party frames up down here. I actually think it's really nice because a lot of people have like, you know, they have like their party here and then arena over here. And I just like having everything on the same side. So then you don't need to like look back and forth. You can just look on one side. Um, let me invite this uh, warlock real quick. Oh, of course. Okay, so I have like my my party frames here, yeah? So I have my party party things here. You know, I only play two, so I only have one and two. Once I do start, like I made place for a third player down here for threes. But I probably need to make these order or maybe move these targeting frames up. Yep. Um... Okay, anything else? Handy notes, just some stuff on the map. Health controllers, change my health controllers basically. Um, Beatrix Plus, I think it's for like auto selling, auto repair, and auto stuff. It's a nice add on to have. Loose control. Um, loose control gives you like, it puts like kidney shots and stuff in the, like any CC. In the target frame and in your frame. That's basically it, I think. And I, don't, I think it also puts like the spell alert in the middle of the screen, but I don't think you need that anymore because the Blizzard UI has it. Um, Omnibar for interrupts and stuff, obviously. Omni CC is like to get this text as your cooldowns. So we get some nice text. That's basically Omni CC. <laughs> Prat is for the chat, so you can like yeah, copy links and stuff. Like if like all the time I link people a link and they say send it in Battle.net instead. Why don't you just install Prat and you can copy it straight from the chat? Boards, that's my cast bars. This here. If I have myself, I have my target here, this there, and then if I focus, I have my focus here. I don't know, it's kind of ugly right now. I just dragged this together for Dragonflight because my entire UI broke and I haven't really bothered like making a nice UI yet. Um, Raid Frame Absorb Text. This is kind of nice for a Disc Priest. It's like, so if you shield someone, the percentage is going to go over 100. And you can see this uh, little shield thing here as well. So, yeah, it's kind of nice if you're a disc priest to have this. Raid frame absorb text. Raid frames, this is to remove the name and icon from your party frames. Yep. Talent tree tweaks, I don't know what it does. Twitch emotes. And it's basically if you write Twitch emotes in chat, they show up as actual Twitch emotes. War game helper if you want to do war games. Weak auras for weak auras. I don't really have any special ones. I can show them after. And this is this is really nice. Scratch cursor application. So a lot of the time when you play this game, you hold the right click button in. So when I when I press my right click, my mouse doesn't actually disappear; it just grays out. It. So I know where it is at all times. So when I start moving it again, you know. And yeah, that's basically it, I think. We'll look at my weak cores for a bit. 